Thank you very much indeed. We move to the last speaker of this theme of the first session, which is Sir John Daniel, President and CEO of the Commonwealth of Learning. You have the floor, John. Excellencies, colleagues, my title is Internationalization, Regionalization and Globalization, Breaking Out of the Iron Triangle, and I shall make three points. First, higher education faces the same key challenges everywhere in the world. Second, some universities have risen to this challenge through a technological revolution that widens access, improves quality, and cuts costs all at the same time. Third, the open educational resources movement is now making this revolution possible in small states as well. First then, one reason for the internationalization of higher education is that the challenge of providing it is the same everywhere. Governments want three outcomes from their higher education systems access to be as wide as possible, quality to be as high as possible, and cost to be as low as possible. The nature of this challenge is clear when you create a triangle of vectors, and with traditional face-to-face -face methods of teaching, this is an iron triangle. You want to stretch the triangle like this to give greater access, higher quality, and lower costs, but you can't. Try extending access by packing more students into each classroom and you will be accused of damaging quality. Try improving quality with better learning resources and the cost will go up. Try cutting costs and you will endanger both access and quality. This Iron Triangle... I take that out of my seven minutes. This Iron Triangle has hindered the expansion of education throughout history. It has created in the public mind, and probably in your own thinking, an insidious link between quality and exclusivity. And this link still drives the admission policies of many universities, which define their quality by the people they exclude. But today there is good news. Thanks to globalization, successive waves of technology are sweeping the world and technology can transform the iron triangle into a flexible tri triangle. By using technology, you can achieve wider access, higher quality and lower cost all at the same time. This is a revolution. It has never happened before. How does it work? The fundamental principles of technology, articulated two centuries ago by Adam Smith, are division of labor, specialization, economies of scale, and the use of machines and communication media. My second point is that these principles have been applied successfully to higher education by the distance teaching institutions, often called open universities. I give the example of the UK Open University as an institution that has stretched the Iron Triangle. With over 200,000 students and 1 million alumni, it has substantially widened access. It is also distinguished by its quality. In the final year of operation of England's teaching quality assessment system, the Open University placed fifth out of 100 universities, and for each of the last three years, it has also topped government surveys of student satisfaction in all English universities. Furthermore, the Open University offer, operates at lower cost per student or per graduate than conventional universities. Not surprisingly, therefore, distance teaching universities have become a global phenomenon. These two slides show how the number of open universities in just the Commonwealth has increased over 20 years. Some Asian open universities have over one million students and they form a natural affinity group. Indra, India's Indira Gandhi National Open University 
and Pakistan's Allama Iqbal Open University have more in common with each other than either has with the conventional universities in its own country. Each enrolls over a million students, each teaches nationwide, each uses similar technologies, and each costs very little to the public purse. And there are global and regional groupings of such universities. The membership of the Asian Association of Open Universities brings together institutions that enroll many millions of students between them and is a very important forum for discussing the role of technology in higher education. But my third point is that the latest technological breakthrough allows you to stretch the Iron Triangle even without the economies of scale that you find in India, Pakistan or even Britain. And that breakthrough is open educational resources. These are teaching and learning materials in digital formats that are freely available worldwide for adaptation and use. Our draft communique talks of higher education as a public good and open educational resources affirm that principle. They herald the creation of a global intellectual commons. Open educational resources are important to smaller countries because creating good learning materials is expensive and using OERs can cut these costs. Moreover, small states no longer have to depend on bigger states for materials. The Commonwealth Ministers of Education have created a collaborative network called, somewhat misleadingly, the Virtual University for Small States of the Commonwealth, through which these 32 small states work together to create courses of importance to them. This courseware is readily adaptable to the needs of each country for use in both face-to-face -face teaching and also in distance or e-learning. So just as technology has revolutionized the cost structure of education in large states, it can now have a similar impact in small states. And helping the small states take advantage of this development is just one element of the joint work plan between UNESCO and COL. Excellencies, colleagues, I hope you agree that these three points are good examples of the benefits of internationalization. Thank you. Many, uh, many thanks.